Hey guys, this is uh, Coded Steel, and this is going to be your fourth lesson in DC electric circuits. Uh, first of all, uh, sorry I haven't made any new videos in a while. I just recently finished a huge project that I was working on in a group, and finally got that done and out of the way. All graduated from college and everything too. That's what I, something else that I was working on doing. So that's all done and out of the way. So now I can actually get back in to starting some new tutorials and stuff. And soon I plan on actually having my own boards and stuff, prototyping stuff for sale on my website, uh, which you guys will be able to check out in the future. I will let you guys know when I actually start posting some of that stuff. So I'll just uh, keep you guys informed on all that. Anyways, let's move on to some more DC circuit type stuff. So my goal is today to get us set up to where next time we can actually run through a simulation in, uh, not in software, but in hardware. We're going to do a hardware simulation next time. I'm actually going to wire up a circuit, and we're going to analyze it with a multimeter. So that's going to be pretty cool. You guys will actually get to see how voltage and currents behave and all that other junk. So I'm not just spewing stuff at you, and you guys actually understand what it is we're, we're doing here. So let's get started here. We're going to talk about summing resistors. Now, I've talked about in the past that uh, current divides between parallel resistances, blah, blah, I'm not going to write the rest of this out, blah, blah, blah. Parallel resistances. Current divides between parallel resistances. So basically what that means, if I have a current I going this way, and I have a resistor, and I have another resistor, this current is going to split. Some of it's going to go this way, and some of it's going to go this way. Okay, that's just a simple... That's a property that we already know, we already understand. So that should be nothing new for you guys, hopefully. Now, the other thing we've discussed so far is that voltage... Uh, why is my marker dying already? I, gosh. All right. And that one's not real good either. How about this blue one? All right, that blue one's okay. Voltage is the same in parallel. So blah, 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 parallel. So basically what I mean is if you have a voltage source connected here, you guys should hopefully remember that's the symbol for voltage source. You have a voltage source here. This is obviously V, and this is obviously V. It's the same in both locations. But in series, voltage splits. So if I had resistors that were oriented like this, then this is going to be V1, and this is going to be V2, and V1 plus V2 is going to be equal to V, or Vs. We'll relabel that Vs, the voltage of the source. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Current's the same in series, but splits in parallel. Voltage is the same in parallel, but splits in series. Okay? Basic understanding there. Just a basic level of understanding there. I'm not, I'm not getting too technical, hopefully. So, we talked about voltage and what voltage and current does. How does resistance work? Well, let's, let's think about that for a second. Um, let's just say we have res a resistor, a network of resistors that looks like this. And it just, maybe it continues forever, actually. We'll just go ahead and we will say it continues forever to generalize it. Well, eventually, obviously, this resistor is going to wrap back around into the source. Man, this marker's fading again. Um, all right, eventually, these resistors are going to wrap back around into the source at some point. They're going to come back. Okay? How do we deal with these resistances? Well, you might just be able to say, obvious. some of you, it might be obvious already, or maybe you already know because you've taken circuits classes, that you know this is going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus dot 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 R to the N, okay? And that's going to be the total equivalent resistance. Maybe that's obvious to some of you guys, but why is it that way? Why is it that you can use this formula? It's for this reason and this reason only. We have a current. We know that current is the movement of charge. 
This charge is going to flow through every single one of these resistors. Well, by Ohm's law, we know that voltage is equal to current times resistance. Since the same current is going to flow through all these resistors, hence they're in them being in series, that means the same current is going to flow through them, we know that voltage is going to divide across each and every single one of these resistors. So we can rewrite this, the Ohm's law essentially is this. We know voltage is going to ch be changing across each one of these. So it be v, v source equals V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V to the N. Okay? Generalizing this further here. Well, this can also be rewritten in Ohm's law form. Vs equals, uh, uh, where am I going with this? I uh, times uh, R1 plus I times R2, there we go, plus I times R3 plus I times Rn, whatever, going on to infinity, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Well, what if, well, not what if, we know, like I said, the same current's going through the same one of these. So even if I label this I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, all of those I's, all those currents are equal to each other. So since that's the case, we can actually factor them all out algebraically, and it ends up being Vs, it's going to end up being something like this. Here, I'll show you guys, I guess, Vs, <sighs> Markers are fading and fading and fading and fading. All of my markers are crap. I have to get new markers. IS, since, like I said, IS, we know the same current's going through each one. So the, the voltage source is supplying the same current for each resistor. R1 plus R2, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's the thing. We can take this current and we can divide VS by IS. What do you get when you divide V by R, or V by I? You get R. Well, in this case, it's going to be RS, or RT, whichever, usually we label it like RT, meaning total resistance. RS, in this case, is the resistance seen by the source. So it's the resistance seen by the source. So... This source is going to see all of this as all of these resistors combined as one resistor and only one resistor. So since that's the case, like I was saying here, you divide this all out, we're going to get that RS, which I'm going to rename RT at this point, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus da 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 Rn. Hopefully that makes sense to you that I just mathematically spelled out to you why we can do this. I mean, conceptually, it might make sense to you that if you put these this way, you know, that's a little, that, that it makes sense that they would, it would work out that way. But for some of you, maybe it, maybe it doesn't make sense that it would work out that way. So that is why you can add resistors when they're in series. Now we got to talk about parallel because parallel is a little bit different. That's actually the trickier one. So let's do parallel really fast here. So parallel resistances, basically meaning the resistors are like this. How do we handle this? How do we handle something like this? What does the voltage source see when there's something like this? Well, if we remember what we said before, about current and how voltage behaves, the voltage across each and every single one of these resistors is the same. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys because I said before voltage distributes it or does, does not distribute itself across resistors when they're in parallel. And the reason that happens is because all of these resistors are on the same nodes. So all of these nodes are the same node, all of these nodes are the same node. I measure from here to here it's just like moving the two multimeter points to the source and measuring the equivalence of, the, of the, the open circuit voltage. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. If I measure here, 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 or here, here with a multimeter, I'm going to get the same electric potential or the same voltage in each of those locations. So that's why voltage is the same in parallel. 
So instead of restating myself a million times, let's actually move forward here. However, current, like I said, is not going to be the same. Current's going to split. You're going to get an I1, an I2, an I3, such and such and such and such, IN. All right? You're going to get a current. The current's going to split. So how do we analyze this circuit here? Well, what we have to do is we have to, we have to state it like this. We say that the total current of the source is going to be equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus da 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 I to the N, however many resistors you supposedly have. But we do know this. The voltage across each of those resistors is the same. V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 such and such and onward, blah, 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 plus da 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 V to the N. Or, sorry, why am I doing that? <laughs> not equals. That's wrong, wrong, we're not adding them all up. It's the same. V2 plus V3 plus V to the N. Or not plus. Equals V to the N. My goodness gracious. All right. Now that we've got ourselves straight there, well, how can we, re we can rewrite this in a specific manner, this equation in a specific manner. If you remember, Ohm's law can be rewritten as I equals V over R. V equals IR or R equals V over I. Those are the different algebraic variations of Ohm's law that we discussed in previous, previous uh, chapter, not chapters, lessons. So what we have to do to this is we have to rewrite it technically in this form here. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is we go ahead and we would take this here and we say that IS, in this case here, is going to be equal to VS over R. Okay, RS, sorry, equals, it's going to be VS over R1 plus VS over R2 plus Vs over uh, R3 plus da 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 Vs over Rn. Okay. So all I did was take this equation and substituted this variation of it into it. So that should make complete and total sense to you guys since I said the voltages at each point is the same. It's Vs, 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 Vs. Well, hopefully you see something in common here. Vs is the same at every point. So I can drop it out of the equation. That's just algebraic stuff. That's from algebra. So we get 1 equals 1 over Rs is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over Rn. Rs, as I said before, you can call it Rt or R total. And that gives us a general formula for resistances. Now you see that they add inversely for parallel. And I just mathematically showed you guys why that is. And that has to deal with the property of how current splits. That's why a resistance is 1 over. It's the inverse of itself when it's going in parallel. So there we have it. That is the proof of parallel and series resistances. So you guys know, understand why that works the way it does. The last thing I want to talk about, about summing resistances, is just a, something, a quick little formula that you can use for parallel resistances. Let's just say we have two resistors. One, our RT is a 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So we have something that looks like this. And they're connected to each other, two resistors. How do we tackle something like this? How do we make it to where we can figure out what RT and my bad because remember, this resistor is also 1 over RT. That was my mistake. Sorry about that. Well, what we can do is we can do this. We can create a general formula. What I'm going to do, and this, may, this hopefully algebraically makes sense to you guys, that I can do something like this, is I want to get a common denominator. Well, how do I get a common denominator? I'm going to obviously leave R1, R2. Well, what do I need to multiply the top and the bottom by to get... R1, R2 here. Well, I need to multiply that one by R2. And this one, I need to multiply by R1. And that's going to give me 1 over RT. So, hopefully, all I did here, multiply the top and the bottom by R2, multiply the top and the bottom by R1. 
Simple enough. RT then is going to be equal to R1, R2. Well, this is actually has to deal with the fact that you go ahead and you say, you can inverse this, sorry. I flip the top and the bottom because it's 1 over. So it's going to end up being RT over R1, R2, R1 plus R2. You can do this for any number of resistors. I can add a third one on if I wanted to, and the formula would get a little more complicated. I'm not going to do that because typically whenever you, add, you uh, do parallel resistors, you usually do two of them at a time. You don't usually do three. You can, because like I said, if I added this one over R3 over here, this is obviously going to become a more complicated thing. I'm not entirely sure what this is, would, would come out to off the top of my head. It's, it's obviously going to be something along these lines of like adding stuff on the bottom and such and such, blah, blah. But, like I said, I'm not going to go that far because usually you just do it in pairs. So that is how you do resistor summing for series and parallel circuits and the basic parallel formula. Last thing I want to talk about, and I know this is probably getting a little long, sorry about that, is power rating. And the reason we need to talk about power rating is because next time the circuit we're going to build is going to deal with, we, we need to make sure we manage it correctly and make sure the correct amount of power is being distributed along the resistors so they don't burn up, so to speak. So, power rating. We've not talked about power, but power is defined as a joule per second. Now, if you remember something, I think I talked about how voltage was a joule per coulomb and current was a coulomb per second. Well, see, see what's in common here. This is a joule, this is a second, these are coulombs. If we multiply voltage and current together, we're actually multiplying joules per coulombs times coulombs per second, and we're going to get joules per second. So mathematically, it makes sense that power equals V times I. This is just the way power is defined. It's energy per second. So basically, it's the rate of energy consumption per second, the amount of energy you're consuming per second. That is the definition of power. That's the way it was defined. That's just the way it is. That's We have to accept it. So that is what energy, what power is. So... Now that we know that power equals V times I, we can create other variations of the power equation by using Ohm's law. You know that V is equal to I times R. Well, V here is P is equal, I can sub this in, I R I. Two I's gives me I squared R. Same thing, if I wanted to put I into here, it would be P equals V times V over R. I'm just quickly doing this, guys, just to not take up too much time. All I did was divide the resistance to the other side of the equation and just solved putting V over R in. So it's going to give me V squared over R. These are your three basic power equations that you're going to deal with in electric circuits. So what we need to and remember is you need to remember this stuff because any circuit that we're going to deal with or analyze in the future is going to involve these manipulations of the power equation. So anyways, that's all we're going to discuss for this time. Uh, next time we're actually going to set up a scenario which we're going to demonstrate on a breadboard and we're actually going to see how voltage and current differentiate themselves. That's all I have for you guys. So I will see you guys the next electrical engineering tutorial.